In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will study the series AC circuits which include the RL series circuit, the RC series circuit and the RLC series circuit. When the resistance is connected in series with the inductor across the AC supply, we get the series RL circuit. The total voltage supplied is equal to the sum of the individual voltage drops across the resistor and the inductor. Thus V equal to VR plus VL. The total opposition offered to the flow of the alternating current is called as the impedance. It is represented by the letter Z. From Ohm's law, VR equals I into R, VL equals I into XL and V equals I into Z. Thus we get the equation Z equals R plus XL. Now this Z is represented as the vector quantity and is equal to Z bar equals R plus JXL in the rectangular form or Z bar equals Z angle phi in polar form. This phi is the phase angle and is calculated as phi equals tan inverse imaginary part upon real part that is tan inverse of XL upon R. Thus we get the impedance triangle for the voltages as shown. The RL circuit, the current lags the voltage by an angle phi. Thus considering the voltage as a reference, we obtain the phasor with the current below the voltage at an angle phi. Now for the AC circuits, we calculate three types of powers. The active power, the reactive power and the apparent power. The active power equals Vi cos phi. Reactive power equals Vi sin phi and the apparent power equals V into I. Thus the power triangle is drawn as shown. The power factor is cos phi equal to P upon S. When the resistance is connected in series with the capacitor across the AC supply, we get the series RC circuit. In series RC circuit also, the total voltage V equals VR plus VC and the voltage triangle is drawn as shown. Applying Ohm's law, IZ equals IR plus IXC. The impedance for the RC series circuit thus becomes Z equal to R minus JXC and the phase angle phi equal to tan inverse of XC upon R. In this case, considering the voltage as a reference, the current leads the voltage by angle phi. Similar to series RL circuit, for series RC circuit, the power triangle is drawn as shown with P equals to VI cos phi, Q equals VI sin phi and S equals to V into I and the power factor equal to cos phi equal to P upon S. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. When we have all the three components connected in series across the AC supply, we get the series RLC circuit. From the circuit diagram, we can easily conclude that the total supplied voltage is equal to sum of the voltage drop across each component. Let's consider that the reactance of the inductor is greater than the reactance of the capacitor. In such a case, the circuit behaves as the inductive circuit and the net impedance is given as XL minus XC and the current lags by the voltage by angle phi. The phase angle in this case becomes phi equal to tan inverse of XL minus XC upon R. Thus the impedance triangle and the current phasor diagram are drawn as shown. Now consider the second case in which XC is greater than XL. In this case the capacitor dominates over the inductor and the net reactance becomes XC minus XL. But the expression for the total voltage remains same as V equals VR plus VL plus VC with VC greater than VL. But as the circuit becomes capacitive, the current leads the voltage by angle phi. In this case the phase angle becomes tan inverse of XC minus XL upon R. Thus the impedance triangle and the current phasor diagrams change significantly. Let's solve some examples now. The current of 5 amperes flows through a non-inductive resistance in series with a choking coil supplied at 260 volts 50 hertz. If the voltage across the resistance is 130 volts and across the coil it is 200 volts, calculate impedance, resistance, the reactance of the coil, power absorbed by the coil and the power factor of the coil. We have V equals 260 volts, 50 hertz, VR equals 130 volts, V across coil is equal to 200 volts, I equals 5 amperes 
and we need to find resistance, resistance of the coil, value of the inductor, power factor and the power consumed. By applying Ohm's law, we get R equals voltage across the resistor R upon current I. Thus, we get R equals 26 ohms. Similarly, the impedance of the coil can be calculated as Z coil equals voltage across the coil upon current I, which comes out to be 40 ohms. The total impedance of the circuit becomes equal to 52 ohms. The total impedance is calculated as the square root of the real part square plus imaginary part square. Squaring both the sides, we get Z total square equal to R plus R whole square plus XL square. But R square plus XL square becomes equal to Z coil. Substituting this value in the equation of Z total, we get Z total square equal to R square plus 2R into R plus Z coil square. Thus rearranging the terms and substituting the values, we get resistance of the coil equal to 8.23 ohms. Now using the equation Z coil square equals R square plus XL square, we can find the value of the reactance of the inductor, which comes out to be 39.14 ohms. Using the relation X1 equals 2 pi FL, we find the inductor that comes as 124.59 millihenry. Phi equals tan inverse of the real part upon imaginary part. Thus we get phi as phi equals 48.82 degrees. Thus we find the power factor as cos phi equal to 0 0.6583 and power absorbed equal to I square R equal to 205.75 volts. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. In a series RLC circuit, sometimes the inductive reactance becomes equal to the capacitive reactance. Thus net reactance becomes zero and impedance becomes equal to resistance only. This condition is called as the resonance and the frequency at which it occurs is called as the resonating frequency. There are some effects of this resonance on the circuit. The net reactance of the circuit becomes zero. Thus Z equals R only. Hence the maximum current flows through the circuit. Also due to this power absorbed by the circuit is maximum. At resonance we have XL equal to XC. Thus 2 pi FL equals 1 upon 2 pi FC. Writing the equation in terms of FR, we get FR equals 1 upon 2 pi root LC or omega R equals 1 upon root LC. For the frequencies less than resonant frequency, the circuit behaves as a capacitive circuit and for the frequencies above the resonant frequency, the circuit behaves as the inductive circuit. Thus we get the following resonance curve. The Q factor or quality factor of the series RLC circuit is defined as the ratio of the voltage drop across the inductor or the capacitor to the applied voltage. Thus substituting the values of the respective voltage drops, we get the Q factor as Q equals 1 upon R into square root of L upon C. Bandwidth of the series resonance circuit is defined as the range of the frequency over which circuit current is equal to or greater than 70.7% of maximum current. The F2 frequency is called as the upper cut of frequency and the F1 is called as the lower cut of frequency. Thus the bandwidth is given as the difference between the upper cut off and the lower cut off frequency. Let's have a quick review of what we've learned in this lecture. There are three types of fundamental AC circuits such as series RL, series RC and series RLC circuit. In series RL circuit being inductive the current lags behind the voltage by an angle phi Z equals R plus JXL. In series RC circuit, being capacitive, the current leads the voltage by an angle phi, Z equals R minus JXC. In series RLC circuit, if XL is greater than XC, the circuit behaves as an inductive circuit and Z equals R plus J into XL minus XC. If XC is greater than XL, then the circuit exhibits the capacitive nature and Z equals R minus JXC minus XL. The frequency at which XL equal to XC condition occurs is called as the resonance frequency and the XL equal to XC phenomenon is called as the resonance. 
The Q factor of the series RLC circuit is given as the ratio of the voltage drop across the inductor or the capacitor to the applied voltage. The bandwidth of the circuit is calculated as the difference between the upper cutoff frequency and the lower cutoff frequency.